Everybody out there, welcome to the first official episode of The Rock Rebellion. You've got Reggie here, joined tonight by my co-host, Eric Hunker, out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Man, it's 2013 is, like, it's over. It's crazy. It's been a big year, man. What, uh, what do you think are some of the biggest stories we've had this year in your book? Oh, man, um, wow. That's, that, there's, I wrote down quite a few things here that uh, kind of stuck in my crawl this year, or things that were rather newsworthy. newsworthy. Uh, first thing I, I put on my list, and I'm sure it's probably on yours, is uh, head going back to corn. Oh, absolutely. That was, you know, that's one of those things that everybody, everybody kind of had a feeling it would happen one day eventually, but didn't know whether it would, just because of everything that was said back and forth in the news and the media, and it was one of those things I think that everybody wanted it to happen, but we'd all kind of made peace with the fact that it might not, and then I, I, I think that when, um... The, the Rebellion Festival last year where he joined him on stage. That was pretty clear after that that it was going to happen one day. Um, you know? Yeah, no doubt. I, I'm, I'm so glad that it did. You know, like, just like you said, you know, the, the aspirations were high, the hopes were really up there. and the, I, I really didn't hold much hope, to be honest, that it would mm -hmm. ever happen. But, you know, uh, a lot of guys these days are, you know, it's more than just corn getting clean. The guys in five finger are doing it. Everybody's kind of getting their act together. They're older. They have families now. And uh, the fact that they got it together, you know, it, it made it something that was possible. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that it did because the new album is just, wow. You know what I mean? Holy cow. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that when, when he left the band, there's it was more than just somebody leaving the band. He did so, There was so much when it went, that went into the recording and the guitar of each album that left, and it was very obvious that a huge part of the band's sound was gone. I mean, just See You on the Other Side was good, but Untitled was not great. Um, the Path of Totality, no, no one really knows what that was, even. Um, uh, the closest know. thing before this that they had come, I think, would probably be Remember Who You Were, Who You Are, and then, yeah. you know, the title almost sums it up right there. I, I think that was their acknowledgement that they had lost their way. Yeah, and I think it was also their way of saying, "Hey, we remember what we what we've done in the past and how we used to sound, and this is our way yeah. of of kind of trying to do it." But still, there was that little aspect missing. And yeah, uh, yeah. with the pair the songs there, they, they did the songs on that album weren't nearly as strong as the collection they put out. On the new one. I mean, wow! I mean, yeah. it's not just the fact that heads back. Even if head had not been there, the songs on here were so strong they would have stood on their own. But the fact that he's there makes it mm -hmm. all the more. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I think watching the interviews and reading what I've read, and then in you know with, you know, pieces about that record. It, it looks like Jonathan Davis really wanted to do a lot of dubstep like he did on the last album. And Head came in and they kind of, he kind of told them what was up and saying, it, it's cool, but we don't want a whole album to be like that. Because he, they, they said that he balanced out the metal with the electronic a little bit. And uh, he said there was a couple moments where it got a little tense. And so I, I'm wondering if, you know... Um, he's a big part of why sonically it sounds like it used to sound. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that he has to be a part of it. That that him being back there, it's that renewed sense of energy that they had when they were first starting up. You know, outside of uh, outside of David not being on the drums, that's the original lineup. So there, there had to be just that throwback, that original intensity that they had. And you can, you can, clear, you can clearly, clearly hear on the new album that it came through. Oh, absolutely. Very, it's very subtle, but even on the first track, Pray For Me, it, it has that spook guitar kind of that had on, you know, Freak on a Leash and kind of the eerie guitar sound. It's very subtle in the background, but it's there. And uh, exactly. just from that first track on the Paradigm Shift, it's obvious that they. it's almost like it was a statement album for them. Um, oh, yeah. Especially with the straight, expect straight out of the gate. Yeah, the expecta oh. expectations are so high on that that it almost had to be something strong right away if fans were really going to give it a chance. And uh, I think they did more than they more than delivered on that album. It's just insanely good. Um, absolutely, I absolutely agree. And it's, it's, I'm 
sure that whenever we get into our top tens, uh, it, it's liable to appear on both lists there as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, other news, I mean, I guess we could lump, you know, three or four of them into just the legal problems of the rock and metal world, whether it's Tim Lambesis, Randy Blythe, or Ian Watkins from Lost Profits. It hasn't, oh, been, a, God, yeah. hasn't been a great year legally for metal. I mean, Tim Lambesis from SLA <laughs> Tying is probably going to prison. Randy Blythe is yeah. out of prison, you know. If, if, if the Ian Watkins incident <laughs> hadn't happened, that Tim Lambesis would have been right there in your face because that's powerful stuff. Yeah, but then exactly. Ian had to go, yeah, I can do you one better. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is not a good thing. This isn't the contest you want to win. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're gonna win it, I guess raping a baby is the way to win it. I guess I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody else in the middle world wants to contest that. You win, dude. It's over. <laughs> yeah. Kudos to you. Here's the trophy. <laughs> he only got 35 years. That's what gets me. 35 years. And for, I mean, I, I think the dude should have gotten life. I mean, that's come on. I mean, I, I'm sure. I'm sure everybody else agrees with that. But I, I think it was just a matter of the number of counts wasn't quite enough. But you know, what's at, at 35 years at his current age? That it pretty much is life. You know what I mean? That's true. And then there's Tim Lambesis, who I mean, like you said, if Ian Watkins wouldn't have done what he did, that would be the. You know the legal problem of the year. I think. I mean, yeah. For, for well, you know that one there teeters right there with what went down with Randy Blythe because yeah. that's a that's that's a hostile situation to think mm-hmm. that a performance could land you in jail for the rest of your days. Oh yeah, I mean, I think that it, it's it's a bigger. I, I think Tim wins it out because Tim's is just an act of outright hatred. Randy's was a victim of circumstance situation. Yeah. Tim set out for his situation. Well, and I think that Tim's Tim Lambesis is so it's it's blown bigger because as the late dying is considered a Christian band, and so for the singer of a Christian band to hire yeah, somebody I'm, I'm to sure his like wife, it. I mean, it, it I'm has, sure that absolutely feeds that fire. Yeah, exactly, and I mean, it, it, and I think that a lot, for a lot of metal fans, it makes them look. I think it puts a lot of Christian metal bands under a bigger microscope just from fans' point of views because if a Christian band like Isolate Dying, their singer would do that, you know, the one, you know, the metal fans that hate Christian music are going to be looking at these other Christian bands to see what's going on with them and to be more critical of them in a lot of ways, which is wrong, but it's it's naturally going to happen, I think. Um, oh yeah. But of course, Randy Blythe, of course, that is different. Like he said, I think that was just more of an active defense on his part and uh, it just ended badly and uh, I mean a fan jumping right. on stage any after Dimebag anybody is going to push the fan off the stage that jumps on you know yeah you know what if it hadn't been Randy it would have been a security guy but somebody was going to do exactly what was done and the fact that it ended it, it that's just a, a total freak thing and how many years of metal have you heard of this thing happening let alone it being the singer who is supposedly the, the actor in, in question, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, and I, I think that, you know, with it being metal and a band as heavy as Lamb of God, there's a huge misconception about what those artists and bands are like personally because they hear the kind of music and they just think that unless you know them or are familiar with it, people on the outside looking in hear it and they think that those people are just mean, bad people just because of the way they sound. And uh, it right, be, it and, be, and that's not that's not the case. If Randy Blythe wasn't in music, if he's one of those few guys who had, it's not because he has charisma, which he does, but he's so well spoken and he's so versed. You know, he's one of those guys. If he, because you know, you over the years you've heard the jokes of Randy for president. Yeah. He's one of those few guys. If he did go into politics, could do very well. Oh, yeah. So, and, and most people don't realize that there's guys within the music world who actually have that quality about them, and Randy is absolutely one of those guys. Oh, yeah. I mean, and he's, when they say he is one of the nicest guys in the world, he really is one of the, one of the nicest. He has one of the biggest hearts in all of music. Not just metal, but all of music. 
And um, he, he, humble, humble beginnings, man. He's from a small town in Virginia, you know, yeah. in, in, in in Virginia, you know, and it's 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 a great place. You grow up in the wilderness. It's a totally different thing than the bands that come out of the big cities like L.A. and stuff. The guys are different. Yeah. They're they're more. You know, Earthy, I guess is the word. They're just they're they're more solid, rounded individuals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another big story for me, I would say, is the fact that the Chariot is has called it quits. It just, I think, wrapped up their flat their last final tour, the farewell tour. For a band as good as that to call it quits, and I don't think anybody has really heard why. It's just they are done. Um, that's huge because I mean, for me, one yeah. of the biggest, one of the biggest in the Christian metal world, one of the biggest bands ever. I mean, with Josh being in Norma Jean and then starting the Chariot, just absolute trailblazers in a lot of ways. They opened the door for so many hardcore Christian bands to really do what they do, and it's so sad to see them, you know, done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, whenever a band uh, strikes a chord like that for as long as they did and as powerful as they did. It's always sad to, get, to see them go. There's actually bands that I've locked on to so hard just that, that actually maybe did a debut album or at best the sophomore and you just, they, they've got something that strikes support just so with you that it really it really finds a place in your heart and it sticks with you. Those, those guys are one of those, they're one of those bands. Yeah, exactly. And their live show is, if you want a live show where you can't put into words what you saw, um, the chariot uh, yeah. summarizes that. I mean, yeah, them and Devin Townsend, right? <laughs> <laughs> that Randall Circus DVD. Oh my God! I mean, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get into that one a little later. But yeah, right. That's that's yes. something that defies description. I, I would say another big story would be the fact Rob Caggiano quitting Anthrax and then jumping into oh, the Volbeat. Um, oh, absolutely. I, I don't know. I, you know what? I mean, it's funny when you look at the, if you have any of the older Volbeat DVDs, Robbie and uh, Scott make appearances in one of them, and it's so funny that, you know, that was kind of like a foreshadowing of what to come. Who who knew? Yeah. I mean, and he, he fits in so well. I mean, they're, uh, I mean, it, you you can't put, Volbeat is just so good. Uh, he's such, yeah. he's such a talented guitarist that it's a perfect fit for him. Right. Um, I was fortunate enough to catch Volbeat this year out in Philadelphia, and as you say, Rob fit. It was perfect fit. It was like he had been there forever. There was no nothing but absolute electricity between him and the rest of the guys. And yeah, man, not only are they one of the best performing live bands, but whoever handles their sound does such an incredible mm -hmm. job. They're, they're, they're truly a pleasure to see live. Yeah, I caught them back in May here in Indiana up at Fort Wayne at Pierre's, which is one of the best places to ever see a show. And uh, it, it was like a party. It was just it, one of the most high octane performances I've I've seen in the last. Few I years. think it's that rockabilly element. You know what I mean? It's like when you hear the music, you can almost you feel like you should be out in the wilderness with a hundred of your friends and three kegs, and that's the that's the jam band for the night. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. I mean it's it's just fun music. I mean you when you hear heaven or hell, you can't not be happy. It's just yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, it's good time. It's good time music, man. It's it's a, it's a perfect perfect marriage of metal and uh, Johnny Cash meets Elvis kind of thing. It's it's a beautiful thing. Absolutely, man. I guess we can jump. Yeah. Ship. Go ahead. Good. I was gonna say, I guess we could jump ship to uh, some of the deaths because the final death that we'll list is one of the biggest stories of the year. There's Claudio from Lacuna Coil, Joey from I Hate God, Clive Burr from Maiden, and of course. Just yeah, man. Slayer. Oh, obviously, obviously. Yeah, man. I, I, there was quite a few I had. I mean, the J uh, Jan Kinnaman from Vixen, who saw that coming. Lauren Black, Great White, didn't didn't see that. Lou Reed, yeah. Uh, Andy Johns, Ray Manzarek, uh, yeah, John Lord, Alvin Lee, a couple real old great '70s guys. Ronnie Montrose mm -hmm. lost a lot of guys. Hell, just uh, two days ago, George Christie from White Widow went down. I mean, mm -hmm. we're just. They're, they're dropping my flies this year, man. It's a, it's a heck of a thing. Now, I don't think any are as, as big and devastating as Hanneman from Slayers because of how much they... Not nah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I think everybody kind of saw it coming eventually, but the fact that it happened, actually really happened, um, 
you know, yeah. one of those things you saw coming, but no one wanted to accept the fact that it was going to happen. Um, yeah, I, I had my fears. I mean, I was pretty much convinced, that, as everyone else, that he was probably never going to be able to be an active motor slayer, maybe like a, a live performance on the track here and there. Maybe he'd be able to write or something at least still. You know? Yeah, a, a little something, but uh, man, to just... And like you say, so out of left field. That wasn't like a news story the week before saying, "Oh, Jeff Hanneman has taken a turn." No, it was just bam. Oh, really? you, you, well, you, yeah, you woke up that morning and was like, "What?" Yeah, I mean, the fact that it, it is good that it happened on the day of the Golden Gods Awards here um, in the states. I mean, that is a good thing because everybody was together, um, so everybody could grieve together at the same time. And it was a good way to have a tribute show to Hanneman. Uh, so I guess it happened. If there is a good day, it happened on the best day that it could possibly happen. I guess. I guess. I guess that's the metal way to go out, right? Yeah. You gotta. If you gotta go out on a cool day, that's the day to do it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Hanneman, Hanneman even knows how to exit in style, brother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, that's probably the biggest metal death since Dio. I think. Um, oh, hard for sure. I mean, you know, it, it may it brings the only other like bigger ones would be you know Dimebag, Dio, Rev, mm -hmm. maybe Paul Gray. Yeah, that was losing yeah. him. I mean, that's hard. That's hardcore. Yeah, and that was. I mean, a lot. I was. I'm glad I got the chance to see um, Paul Gray perform before he passed, and the Rev. Um, but I never got the chance to see Hanneman, and unfortunately, I never will. Um, but uh, you know. Hopefully, it is a beautiful thing to behold. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, 2014 will see less deaths than this year because it's just insane. Um, I, well, my concern. Well, you know, I next my next news thing would be my concerns for a couple guys who are looking death in the face these days. It seems. I mean, you got health concerns. You know, you got Tony Iommi, you got Lemmy, it's even Steve Perry from Journey, cancer scare. I mean, we've got, we've got a lot of legends uh, who are not doing well. Yeah, it's it's scary, um, but hopefully those guys will turn it around. Um, I, I guess the uh, another big news story from this year would just be something that just hit I think last week, and that's Joey Jordison leaving Slipknot. Uh, Absolutely, no. What? So uh, there seems to be some debate that Joey exited or was he asked to leave? Yeah, I, I, I honestly, my honest opinion, I think that. He want the rest of the band is obviously ready to write. They have been for you know the last month or two. And I honestly think that with Scar the Martyr coming and debuting in the last few months, I think that maybe Joey, his priorities are on Scar the Martyr, and the guys are just tired of waiting, and he just doesn't want to do anything Slipknot related. Um, and they got to keep going somehow. Yeah, I agree. That sound, sound reminiscent of uh, Set Dream Theater a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, it could yeah. be. Um, pretty much the same, pretty much the same situation. Yeah. An absolute member drummer, even. Yeah, yeah. And Port these schedules can't work, and there you go. Portnoy. I mean, I think Portnoy should have known that that event sevenfold thing wasn't going to be permanent. He was just filling in until so that they could play the, you know, they could tour on Nightmare for a little bit. I don't think anybody saw, obviously, outside of Portnoy, that it wasn't gonna, you know. Mark Portnoy and Event Sevenfold permanently. I don't know. You know, it, it seemed. Yeah, uh, I I couldn't see it. And yeah. uh, if you listen, if you listen to to Mike talk, he always wants to play it off like it, he never really thought it was going to be a, a real thing. But mm. uh, conflicting stories tell you otherwise. So yeah. it's one of those things where I guess unless you're right inside, you really don't know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's other rumors out there about what really happened with Joey. Um, you know, it could be a, num a number of things, but it it does, oh, yeah. it does suck because he was one of the original members even before Corey Taylor was even in the band. Um, exactly. And so, I mean, it's it's going to be, I think, a long process until everybody knows exactly what happened. I mean, Corey Taylor said a couple things, but nothing to talk about why. I guess there's lawsuits or legal things going on and all that, which is, you know... Obvious well, that that's that, going to happen. That, that's another big. That's another big question. At what point, when you lose so many core members, do you stop using the name? When should it not be slipped on anymore? That's just that's, that's just like why. When is it not Leonard Skinner anymore? I mean, there's two original members yeah. left in the entire band. 
Um, yeah, yeah, you know what? There's quite a few bands out there who are doing it that it's that one core member left, uh, and you know they're still doing it under the name. There's a few bands that are out there that have no core members. I was shocked when Quiet Riot came to town this year and thought, "My goodness, how do you do that without a lead singer?" <laughs> yeah, I, I think that with Slipknot is, even though it's not the core original. It is as far as the, the self-titled debut from '99 goes. I it is. There's only two members from those nine that are gone: Paul and Joey. The rest from that self-titled are still there. So I think as long as there's over half of that lineup there, it'll. I'm cool with it. Um, yeah, yeah I, I'm still okay with it too. It's just it's always a question, and, and you know that it's going to be one that they're hit with heavy next year, no matter what they do. Oh, they're going to have that's going to be one they're going to get. Oh, yeah, which, I mean, that pretty much rules out any press interviews with Slipknot for next year, unless you're, you know, Rolling Stone or Loudwire, probably, because, you know, just like with Mayhem, they did not want to do many interviews because his first two are after Paul Gray's dead, and, uh, you know, they know they're going to get asked the same thing. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, and you know what, when it comes to a situation like that, you can only rehash that day in and day out so long before it actually starts to really mentally play with you. And I think a, a core member leaving a band does, it does something to the members. You know, they're, it, they're not the same after that, whether it's a passing or somebody leaves the band. I, I think that it changes the band permanently. Um, yeah. In a lot of ways, sometimes for the better. You know, there's some bands that have had a member pass that their music yeah. actually gets a little bit better because there's more emotion in it. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. It, or, or the death has paused them to create some of the best music they've ever created. Yeah, exactly. Um, and um, even though he wasn't an original member, unfortunately, as long as Corey Taylor's in Slipknot, most fans are gonna be happy. I think. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know what it is about Corey Taylor, but he's like a god among metal fans, um, which I love. It, it, it is odd. It is odd for a guy to come out of a, a strange place such as Iowa to have that kind of hold on on the general public. Well, I mean, I come out of Iowa, so I can understand. Yeah, well, that. I got, maybe that's why. You, maybe that's why you relate to it on such a intimate and personal level. <laughs> any any time that a band comes from your area that starts to do well, you're like, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I think with with Slipknot, especially with Corey, because he's in Slipknot and Stone Sour. Um, I being from there, I can relate to the emotion that's in the in those songs because there is so little to do in that state that you're either gonna drink or you're gonna play music, most likely. Um, if you're right. into music, you're gonna drink or play music or both. And I mean, there's just. All you, you're just, you know, there's not a lot to do there, so you're going to write music if you're a musician, and that's why he has so much material, I think, because, you know, I know what it's like being there. It's awful. Um, that's yeah. why I left, um, you know. Um, so what, what, I guess, let's, let's talk about some of the shows that we've done this year with the Front Row Report. It's 2013. Well, before, 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 we, before we switch gears, real quick, a couple other, they're kind of lesser news story, but okay. things that, that may relate to some other folks out there. Um, one thing, um, and, you know, Hinder parting ways with Austin Winkler. Yeah, that was kind of yeah, where they, that was big, yeah. Um, uh, J Man coming back to the fold with Mushroom Head. That's pretty big news. It's nice to see him back. Uh, you got Richie Sambora bailing from the John, Be John Bon Jovi tour. Uh -huh. Chester Bennington joining Stone Temple yes. Pilots. Yes. Night w Nightwish, a big a epic band from across the uh, part across the pond, parting ways with Annette and hiring Floor Jansen. That's pretty big over there. And rumors that Kiss may reunite for the. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Yes. That could be cool. Um, that could be cool. And on a personal note, I was here at the Front Row Report getting a, a, a press nod for your Luna comments in the in Revolver magazine this year. Yeah, that was pretty big, I guess. That's in yeah. For, I mean, on a personal <laughs> on a personal note, for for us, that that's a pretty big thing. That's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, on another personal note, then we'll go back to some of the some of what you touched on. Just the fact that um. Speaking with Revol of Revolver, the fact that I was asked to write a review for Revolver was was pretty cool for me. Um, right, you know, 
um, that was. Yeah, you, you gotta give you gotta give a nod to that. that that's that's big. You 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 must it must be acknowledged that if we're doing a year end thing, that must yeah. be part of it. Yeah, I I was that was um, I still have that article. So, um, so as you should, that should be framed <laughs> somewhere. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, with Kiss, not only are they talking about doing a, re- a reunion at the Hall of Fame, there there's discussions and rumors and uh, talks that they may do a reunion tour after the Hall of Fame. Uh, Free Ace has talked about it. Um, I believe Gene has said, "Sure, why not?" But that may be for the hall for the hall show. Um, but obviously, you know, with a band like Kiss, you know, those questions and rumors are going to come up. That hey, they might uh, they might do a reunion tour after the Hall of Fame. Which I mean, with when you're on a level like that with a fan base as big as Kiss. You know, fans want to see that original lineup. Fans want to see Peter and Ace. So why not put your issues aside, regardless of how big they are, just for one last farewell tour, one last reunion tour, just a, even a, a ten a ten date tour. Just do something right. again, you know. Right. Um, you know what I mean? Let's, let's be realistic. They're in their fifties now. Um, it really, at some point now, really should be their last tour because at some point they're not going to put on the show they should. So yeah. bow out gracefully. But yeah, if you're going to do it, and you're going to go out and do it one last time. Do it big. Do it right. Do it with everybody who was there. And not the good lineup they have now. It sucks because it is a good lineup. I mean, oh no, please, nothing. You know, I, Tommy Thayer and, and 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 Eric Singer. I mean, they're they're killer. They're they're awesome players. I mean, if you think about it, if you actually go and look at their the writing credits and some of the lighter of Kiss's stuff, you're going to see Tommy's name in there anyway. And I mean, and Eric Singer's been on board for for well, pretty much as long as as, as uh, Peter Chris. Yeah, and I mean, their Monster album was a it was a great album for you know with a catalog as big as Kiss. I mean. For an album this late in a career, for any band that's been around that long, for it to be good is, yeah. you know, that's good. There's so many bands that have been around forever that release new music that, one, nobody knows happens, or two, just doesn't live up to anything compared to what they've done in the past. So for kids to release a record now that, that it, has any kind of relevance, it, 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 it's a statement. Exactly. It's like when ACDC did, uh, what was it, Black Ice a few years ago. It was yeah. it was good, but it wasn't, like, great. Um, because the, the, there was so much expectations. Kiss, there was a lot of expectations, but it delivered in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, that there, there's a lot to be said about that, especially with the lineup like they have now with, you know, Gene and uh, Paul being the only originals left. So... Right. Um, but yeah, um, but of course, Hinder parting ways with Austin Winkler. I think everybody kind of saw that coming eventually. Um, yeah, it, it definitely wasn't a shock, but the fact that it finally happened is still kind of, mm, like, yeah. where do we go from here? Yeah, I mean, he's, he, you can only have a singer go into rehab and get, you know, on a drug binge so many times until the rest of the band gets sick and tired of it. Um, they, they were becoming the modern day Stone Temple Pilots. They, he was taking down the role of Scott Weiland, and nobody wants that, which is yeah. why Chester Bennington's in Stone Temple Pilots. Yep. <laughs> well, that, and I mean, I, they kind of braced fans for it. I think they did that the right way when, you know, they did the tour with with uh, Saving Abel's guy. You know, that kind of braced fans for a possible, you know, departure. Right. Um, which, uh,. No, I think they did that right. I think, you know, it kind of eased fans into it. It's almost like it was, it's almost like they knew it was going to happen. It was already, you know, decided. So, because um, he said, Austin said he's already been working on solo material that's almost done. So Yeah, I, I saw that same news posting and thought, wow, I guess she didn't waste no time. He must have been writing in rehab, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, any time, you and I both know how long it takes to really make an album, even an yeah. album. So the fact that it's almost done shows that he's been out of the band for a while, or at least been writing for a while. So, um, you know. Uh, I'd say definitely holding back at the very least. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, of course, Chester joining Stone Temple Pilots and the whole legal fiasco between Stone Temple Pilots and Scott Wheeland and all of that stuff. Um, you know, it's... Uh, it kind of sucks to see that happen, but STP hasn't yeah. done anything for a while, so... Um, Strip it down to, to bare tactics. What did you think of the EP? Uh, I enjoyed it. It was good. 
Um, I wasn't sure what to expect with Chester in Stone Temple Pilots because really outside of that solo thing he did a few years ago, there really hasn't been anything from oh, him yeah. in Lincoln Park. So it was weird hearing him without the Lincoln Park sound. I think right. I think that in time, I think that we need to wait until... For me, I won't be able to make a good assumption until a full-length album is released. But um, I think... Yeah, I don't want to jump, jump to conclusions, but... I will say that the EP didn't absolutely blow me away. It was good. Um, it was good. It had, it, was good. St- it had the STP sound, which was good. Right. Um, yeah. But, and that, uh, you know, you can't go wrong there. <laughs> it's, it was just weird hearing Chester without the Lincoln Park sand and Stone Temple Pilots without Scott Whelan. Um, right. You know, it's it's really, it's weird. But if you can get past it, it's it's it wasn't bad. It was enjoyable. Uh, it, yeah, it's it's not the worst thing, believe me. Because yeah. there's been some pairings in music that, uh, yeah, to this day you're still scratching your head going, oh, <laughs> who thought <laughs> that was a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> um, but so yeah. where to, where to next, my friend? Let's talk about some of the shows we've done this year. Cool. Um, I'll let you go first. What are some of the standout shows that you've done this year? And I think I know uh, which ones might be on your list. So let's. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure you probably will. But uh, some of the ones that I really, really enjoyed this show, and I'll tell you the various reasons why. Obviously, Guar Hate Parade at Mr. Smalls. Number one, it's a really, really tiny club. And even if you're not a huge fan of Guar's music, wow, what an incredibly fun live show. So you got to love it. Uh, another one, Mushroom Head at the Alta Bar. Great small club. One Eye Doll opened the show. They were awesome. Mushroom Head owned it. They were all through the crowd, moshing on the bars. Just great show. Obviously, Slayer at stage a yeah. killer band, possibly the last outing for them. And Gary Holt from Exodus on guitar did a fantastic job. Uh, Paul Bostaff, drums, great. It was just a fantastic show. Good year at Four On did a great job. Uh, for me, a personal show, Texas Hippie Cola at the Altar Bar. One of my favorite bands in such a small little intimate setting. Uh, just, just fantastic. Uh, obviously, Hailstorm at Stage AE, the, the headlining show. I've seen them twice, for, no, three times this year. And the, the headlining hour and a half set, 19, 20 songs, great thing. Full beat in Philly, fantastic show for previously discussed reasons. Uh, Death Angel at the Altar Bar, it was great to see the a metal band from from far back coming back with a strong album putting on such a great performance on a Halloween night yeah t- totally cool uh, for me an old school guy um, Creator hasn't been in the States for in Pittsburgh for probably 20 years so the Creator Overkill show at the Altar Bar that was just that was a one for the heart for me uh, Lamb of God Kill Switch at Stage AE wow what uh just uh, four bands that night and every band better than the last. Um, a big one for me is a old punk guy, the Flag Show. It's not entirely Black Flag, but uh, to see them out playing Flag songs, wow, that was killer. Since they may be over, I have to mention the Hinder Show with Nonpoint at the Altar Bar at the beginning of the year. That was a great one. Uh, KMFDM at the beginning of the year, Mr. Smalls. That was a great uh, but interesting show. Uh, different crowd shows up turns out for a KMFDN show and one last one I traveled out for you guys for here at the for the uh, front row report and I did the Sick Puppies 10 year uh, show out at the Chameleon Club and I had a great time that night Sick Puppies are so awesome and Emma is just a cheap wow one of the best players out there nice that's my list that's my list brother <laughs> I yeah, that's a good list. I kind of knew kind of what was going to be on that list. Um, for for me, uh, for st- I started the year off great with uh, Stone Sour and otherwise in Fort Wayne at Pierre's, and uh, that show for me it stood out because um, one, the fans body surfed the trash cans up to the stage, um, which anytime that happens is a winner right away, and that was during the first song. Also. The fans were so loud singing Bother that Corey Taylor stopped and you could just see him say, holy shit, wow. Anytime yeah. Corey Taylor is made to be speechless or it has a stop of performance because of the crowd blowing him away, that's a good show in my book. Um, oh, indeed. Must be acknowledged. Oh, absolutely. I would say Skillet at Spirit Song in Ohio at Cedar Point. Uh, not at Cedar Point, but uh, I don't remember the name of the um, um, 
the amusement park. But two days after their uh, after Rise was released this year, um, Skillet's headlining show with all the fire and pyro. And, oh, um, cool! Yeah, that was. Anytime you see a show right after a band releases their record, is highly anticipated. Um, is gonna be a good show, but um, for me the the big one would have to be Rock on the Range. Um, that lineup they had with it with it being Corn second show back with Head. Um, that lineup this year was amazing: Corn, Smashing Pumpkins, Stone Sour, Papa Roach, Bullet, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Bush, Volbeat, Skillet was on there, Sick Puppies, and Seven Dust, just to name a few of the 44 that were there. Um, it's an environment you can't. Describe 100,000 fans over three days was just outstanding. Um, just like you, know, I did Sick Puppies two days ago, actually, here in uh, here in Indiana. Sick Puppies always put on a great show. Um, the band has really, really come into their own over the last two albums, I think. Um, oh, yeah. The songwriting has uh, evolved leaps and, leaps and bounds. Oh, absolutely. Connect is, isn't their best album they've ever done, but it is good. I do think that a lot. Well, of things, I still go back to Tripolar. I think it's uh, the best offering they've had. It, Tripolar is the best record they've had. I think I, eh, I would put Dressed Up as Life before it, just because that started it for them. But Tripolar is what gave them their break with "You're Going Down." Connect. I do think it. I don't think Connect has gotten the credit that it deserves from the media and the critics. Um, it is better than the reviews it's gotten. It's just different. But um, obviously, Hailstorm. Every single time this year that I've seen them, they've they've delivered. Um, Seven Dust in Kokomo, Indiana, was outstanding. As was Pop Evil in Kokomo. Um, it was. Uh, if you ever want a good show, Center Stage Bar and Grill in Kokomo, Indiana, is a great venue to see a show um, with great food and uh, reasonable beer prices. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a little plug. Pink, believe it or not, Pink is on that list for me. Um, her stage show, out of everybody I've seen, is in my top ten. Uh, officially in my top ten. She flew through the crowd. She It was like Cirque du Soleil meets Pink. It was... Uh, cool. Yeah, it was great. I would put... Um, I saw Toby Mac a couple weeks ago. They did a Soul Train line. That was a home run for me. Anytime there's a Soul Train line in a concert is awesome. Um, it is just awesome. Um, Avenged Sevenfold on their Hail to the King tour was great. Shine Down on the Carnival of Madness was outstanding. That whole bill was good. Um, I would put Mayhem on there this year. Um, and then I would uh, finally I would put um, Hollywood Undead here in Indianapolis was outstanding. They always put on a, a party of a show. Um, so that would be that would be my top shows that I've done this that I have done this year. Not that they not that the ones I didn't list weren't good, but those are my winners. Psycho Stick was good uh, back in May. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. There's obviously other shows that we did oh, that just absolutely. didn't make the list, but it's obvious we have quite a bit of common ground. Yeah, um, and I'm sure you know if certain tours hit more markets, we'd probably even have per perhaps more common ground. <laughs> but a lot of stuff that hits your area doesn't hit mine, and vice versa. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's good that when a show doesn't hit here, usually it hits where you are, um, which is great. And uh, I can't, I can't express how appreciative I am to the publicists and record labels that help us out with everything that we're able to do. Um, they're all great to work with. Um, I haven't really had a bad experience yet, especially this year, which has been the biggest year we have had. Like. Than ever, um, so obviously yeah. 2014 is bound to be bigger. Um, yeah, I was going to say since I've come on board, it's you know even when there's a slight bit of confusion, uh, the yeah. people that we're working with behind the scenes always seem to come through in the pinch and mm -hmm. get you in and get get things taken care of. So right. it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing. Right, as long as they have it, the it's nice. It's nice when the people behind the scenes really, really are uh, mm -hmm. really good at what they do. <laughs> now there is one, you know. Obviously, there, you know, unless it's Pat Benatar, that show didn't go very well. Um, but uh, that's okay. We'll get it next time. Um, we just need to make sure your name is on the uh, guest list. Yeah, well, you know, for, for everyone who screws up, there's someone who goes the extra mile. I got, I got to give extra props again to Paul from Heaven's Basement who stopped in the middle of his dinner to get me into my show. And I, I must give a quote here in Paul's proper British accent. When confronted by uh, security saying, well, can you get me this guy's credentials? He replied, and I quote, 
But I could do that, mate, or he could just let me do my fucking job. <laughs> so, thank That's you to Paul. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, you know, I would have to, um, you know, this, the tour manager that Sick Puppies have right now, Becky, is one of the best tour managers I have had, I have worked with this year. Um, their, their previous tour manager this year, Sam, was great as well. Um, but Becky, the other night in Fort Wayne, um, I've got to give her props. The roads were so bad. It was raining so hard we couldn't see the road. And we had a two-hour drive. I got off work at my normal job at 1 o'clock. We had to be there by 3. It's a two-hour drive. And traffic was bad. I texted her and I said, hey, we're going to be a little late. We ended up being about 15, 20 minutes late. She was fine with it. She still let us do the interview. Gave us everything we needed. And then she, you know, she didn't hover over us she didn't she stayed you know she didn't in fact she went she left the room and went to another room and she just she let us do our thing which is is great and i've really got to give her props for that she made sure we had everything we needed and definitely helped us out on that as well as did you know pierre's the venue is a great venue their staff was great that night um it was freezing outside and since we were working the show, they let us go ahead and go in, go on in early, and um, they let us go in early for the show and sit, it, sit, so we didn't have to wait in the cold since we were working. And it was just an all-around good show. Most shows are going to have something that doesn't work out in your favor. Um, that was one show that everything, not one thing went wrong. It was outstanding. I couldn't have been happier. So, uh, I guess shout out to all the tour managers, publicists, record labels, and everybody that have been great to work with this year. Um, it's been awesome. And uh, I couldn't be happier with everything we've been able to do this year. So Yeah, yeah it's been, it's been uh, you know, I haven't been on for the whole year, but uh, the last half of it's been a fun ride. Shout out to you, too, because you've come on in, uh, in August, I think it was, and uh, helped out like, like crazy. And uh, it's, been, uh, it's been great, you know. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, so. I'm loving it, man. Loving every minute of it. <laughs> Let's see. Li living, living the uh, rock and roll dream, my friend. Living the rock and roll dream. <laughs> now, you've got, a, you've got a rant lined up. Um, you got something. I do have a couple here. <laughs> Let's pick one. What's the one thing that has just been grinding you, just driving you insane this year, or for a while, that you just you've got to talk about it. You've got to get it off your chest. Oh man, that's tough. There's a couple here that I really want to touch, but one that's really, really, really currently pissing me off is bands, two bands, two touring versions of the same band. Please, for the love of God, Queens right, Great White, <laughs> LA Guns, stop. There only needs to be one of you. If you can't work it out, then just lay the band to rest and do your next project. Let it go. Mm, yeah. I can't I can't take it. And to just, you know, to clarify Queensryche, uh, the Jeff Tate lineup album, not so great. The lineup with uh, Todd Latore on vocals, really fantastic. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you guys, just you're making bad decisions and putting out lackluster material. Please, one band or no band. <laughs> well, it's almost like that uh, frequency, frequency unknown album. It was almost like it was made out of spite. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that it's it's. I mean, frequency compared to the self-titled Queens Drake albums in terms of quality of song, day and night from one another. Uh, yeah, obviously everybody wants to hear Tate's vocals, but man, it's just it's just the idea. They just there's too many versions of too many bands out there, and it's just ridiculous. Well, then there's bands like The Sweet that I think they have three lineups. Uh, yeah, it, you, know. It is, you know what I mean? When that starts happening, it's just ridiculous. And, just, and you know, let let the band name go. The thing about Queensryche right, is that the the Jeff Tate lineup is not a bad lineup. You know, Rudy Sarzo's in there, Sarzo's brother's in there, yeah. Tate's in there. It is a good lineup. It's talent, a talented lineup. It's, oh, it is. Uh, really, when, they were here, they were, when they were here in Pittsburgh, they were at the venue on the corner from my house. Even though I wasn't going to the show that night because I had seen what they were going to do a million times, mm -hmm. I went down and waited around the tour buses and got me some some autographs i am rudy sarza signed my diary of a madman yeah the lineup's impeccable yeah <laughs> it's just it doesn't work you know there's some lineup yeah it doesn't does. work yeah um, it just does you know i guess for me the the main thing that's bugging me and it has been for about two years is 
the big city rock radio problem we have it's like an epidemic in every big city it seems like where the rock radio we have it in Indianapolis we have they have it in other cities as well where the rock radio is not rock radio it's Foo Fighters Old Stone Temple Pilots Nirvana and then Top 40 Pop with Mumford and Sons mixed in there they, they're passing off these happy, you know, poppy bands like Imagine Dragons and Lumineers as rock when they're not playing bands like Pop Evil, uh, Otherwise, Gemini Syndrome, Hailstorm, that are POD that are still doing music and coming out with music that is outstanding and getting a huge following in the rock and metal community. But they don't want to play it. Uh, right. It's that in, the, in, in terms of radio these days, unless it's a college station, uh, and the, like, like you say, the, the, what they're putting on is just, oh my God, it's exactly. so repetitive. And then, and, it. and then I tell I tell people that I know, oh, hey, I'm gonna I'm going to cover so and so. Hey, I got the new such and such album. Like I'm like, hey, I, have you heard the new Papa Roach album? I quote one person saying, oh, they're still making music. Stuff like that. I, in fact, I, I I went on Facebook and I I posted on the Indianapolis rock station's timeline, telling them, you know, basically my opinions. And there, and I listed bands and like you're not playing Five Finger Death Punch, Skillet, Hailstorm, all of the and like ten other bands. And their response was, um, that music isn't popular anymore. Those bands that you've listed, none of them, none of those bands are doing anything relevant, and they're all struggling. Um, and, and my response was, all of those bands had top tw- had top forty albums on the Billboard two hundred charts this year. Um, Death Punch debuted in, at number one, I think, number two at least twice this year. Skillet debuted at number three or four. You know, Papa Roach was in the top 20 last year with The Connection. But these rock stations don't want to play it. They want to play what's popular to get more listeners. In fact, they're alienating a whole, a whole population of music fans. And the music that they're playing is not rock. In fact, it's music that the people who are playing it didn't even write. You know, all of these bands that are popular, they don't write anything they play or sing. It's given to them. In fact, most of them don't even sing when they're performing. Um, you know, and it's ridiculous, and I blame things like that for the, the quote-unquote, you know, death of rock, which isn't even true, but it's stuff like that that is killing. Uh, the world of rock is the world of rock is more popular than it ever has been. It's yeah. having one hell of a resurgence. It's just not rock in the mainstream. radio may be dying, but rock music is right. It's just rock rock music isn't in the mainstream. It's not in the public eye anymore, but it is doing very well. I mean, Five Finger Death Punch it sold is. over hundred over hundred thousand copies of each of their albums that came out this year. You know, well, the sad thing is these days. The sad thing is, in, unless you're Metallica or Black Sabbath, uh, uh, mainstream radio just doesn't really play the really heavy stuff too much anymore. It's, exactly. It's, it's, it's an abomination, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Now, album sales are pretty much dead, um, for the most part. Um, you know, that is true. And, you know, concerts aren't selling as well every tour that comes through, but it's, it's half and half. You know, some bands don't sell. Uh, a lot of it is. It, a lot of it is. Is there's really not a lot of places for them to mm-hmm. to do PR. You know what I mean? But I don't know how advertising is in, in your area, but here in the Pittsburgh area, unless you're going out looking for the shows, you're not going to know about them because there's nowhere around here for you to find out what's coming yeah. out, outside of seeking it out on your own. Exactly. Which is a big part of why things are just dying. Because, like mm-hmm. you said, nobody wants to listen to the radio to hear the same ten songs every hour. Exactly. Hey, let me so give you the bands that matter, the tours that are actually worth seeing, go totally unnoticed. And then you tell people about it three days later, and they're like, "What? I missed that." Exactly. Um, but when they do hear about, it, they don't want to spend the money to go to it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, in, in your line of work, it, it's to the point now where you're when you call a friend and tell them that you're going to the show, they're like, "Well, can you get me in?" Yeah, exactly. Uh. <laughs> you know, it's it's frustrating. Um, you know, I do blame you know the you know the 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 non dedication of rock radio 
of you know to play rock radio their non dedication to that to how the you know the slow decline of rock popularity because I mean if they still played rock music it would be huge you know people would still know what's going on but they don't that's why here in Indianapolis the majority of people don't even know who Volbeat is they've never heard of them you know they don't know Smile Empty Soul released another album this year that was very good by the way um, they don't know that Five Finger Death Punch is you know, making new music, or that, you know, they don't know who Skillet is, they don't know who Red is, they don't know who Otherwise is, which is one of the best up-and-coming bands today. Um, they've never heard of Gemini Syndrome, who are even, you know, one of the best metal artists that will probably be on Mayhem next year. They don't know who any of these people are, they're missing out on, you know, rock radio is robbing rock fans and metal fans of everything, you know? Oh, man, and for me, I can take it an even level further on that, because, you know, me... I listen to stuff from overseas that it's, it's quite obscure here, but overseas, these guys have 15, 20 albums to their catalog. And do you think you will ever hear one solitary song by these guys on rock radio unless its YouTube video gets a million hits? Even then. Not going to happen. I heard our rock station here played uh, Thrift, Shop, Thrift Shop by Macklemore. They play One Direction. They play all kinds of crap. They should never be worthy of a rock radio airplay. But they don't. I'm sorry, but you, One Direction and Rock Radio do not go exactly. together. Exactly. But that, that's, that's one of those, uh, what, what do you call that? Uh, <laughs> they, they play a <laughs> AWOL Nation was at their rock fest, at their radio rock festival, AWOL Nation. Um, and they played. Yeah. And they played. Who's sponsoring that rock? Who's sponsoring that Rolling Stone? Because that sounds like an airline. And they, they played after Buck Cherry. They, play, they had a better slot than a rock band. You know, there was the only ones that headlined after them was um, Soundgarden and Bush. Everyone else was ahead of them. You know, it's it's frustrating. And you know, a Wall Nation isn't bad, but they should not be. They should not have a, sl a good slot on a rock. They shouldn't be on a rock radio festival. They shouldn't. You know, um, when Imagine Dragons can sell out a a theater here and um, filter red, otherwise, and we use human. Can't can't fill it halfway. There's something wrong. You know. Well, uh, for, again, let me relate it to the overseas scene. I went and saw a couple bands that are hugely successful. Nightwish and with Intation, who have maybe hit the states once in mm -hmm. ten years, maybe twice in ten years. Who can sell out fifty thousand seat arenas across the pond? But here in the states, I saw them in a small club, and even the small club was only half filled. Exactly. It's sad. Um, Hey, let me give you a call right back. I got my fiance beeping in on me. Um, let, me oh, hi, man. let me give you a call right back here in a little bit. Um, and we'll yeah. finish this. All right, man, I'll be here. All right, cool. All right. All right, see ya. All right, we should probably go ahead and shift gears to the uh, top 10 rock albums, or just the top rock albums of 2013. Um, I'll let you go first with what you feel are the top rock albums of 2013. Uh, any particular, uh, are we just, uh, I actually have 25 things written down, uh, do you just want my top 10 or honorable uh, mention? Let's just go to the top, just the top albums of the year. What, what, I don't know, what, what do you think were the best records of the year that came out? Um, Rock. Uh, my, my top 10, I had, uh, Alter Bridge, Fortress, hmm. uh, Sick Puppies Connect, hmm. Black Label Society, Unblackened. Kill Devil Hill, Revolution Rise, Tantric, 37 Channels, Striper, No More Hell to Pay, Skillet, Rise, Scott Stapp, Proof of Life, mm. Letter Black, Rebuild, and Pop Evil Onyx. Nice. I've got... I've got We as Human self-titled debut, Soil's Hole. I've got Device self-titled debut, Stone Sour's House, House of Golden Bones Part 2. Uh, Pop Evil Onyx. Volbeat. Their new one is outstanding. Um, Alter Bridge Fortress. Seven Dust Black Out the Sun. Um, I've got Close Your Eyes, Line in the Sand. Just because with a new front man, three records in, it can be tough to recapture the sound you've had and build on it, which they've absolutely done. I've got Him, Tears on Tape. Skillet Rise and Reds release the Panic. It's my top rock records of the year. I 
lot of uh, your top ones are in my extended list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the Gemini appeared in there, the Stone mm. Sour. Uh, yeah, the, the soil. Nice. We had common ground there. Nice. For top metal, I've got Double Driver. I've got Love and Death's debut. Uh, Hate Breed, Divinity of Purpose. I've got Living Sacrifice, Ghost Thief. Got Stripers, No More Hell to Pay. Got Rob Zombie's Venomous Rat Regeneration Vendor. Not only is it good, it's a great album title. Uh, Avengers Sevenfold's Hail to the King. Both Five Finger Death Punch records. Butcher Baby's Goliath. Uh, Black Sabbath's 13. Ghosts of Vesta Sumam and their uh, covers. EP. I've got Motorhead. I've got Korn's Paradigm Shift. And I've got Gemini Syndrome's Lux. But for my honorable mention, I have to throw in Devin Townsend's Retinal Circus DVD. Cool. It has to well, go in that's there. Actually, that, 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 that's, that's actually what started my top metal was the Devin Townsend Retinal Circus. <laughs> I was just so blown away by that uh, that it's, it's just something that bears witness. Um, I had Testament, The Dark Roots of Thrash. Uh, I had, a, as like you, both five fingers, obviously. Um, one that really hit home for me this year was the new Propane, the Final Retribution. Just, oh my God. I can't express enough to just what a good slap of melodic slow metal it is. It's just wonderful. Uh, Corn, the new one, of course. Uh, Men's Sevenfold, The Hell to the King. I had Troubles, the new one, the Distortion Field in there. Uh, Havoc's new one, Unnatural Selection. Uh, for Slayer fans and Old School Thrash, that's an amazing album. Uh, Motorhead, Aftershock, and uh, Black Sabbath 13. And then uh, just comparable, you know, I had some common ground with you. Uh, with You know, I had... Uh, the Seven Dust in there, I had Butcher Babies in there, uh, I had uh, The Ghost in there, I had The Seven Dust in there, and then there was a couple other ones that I threw in. Yeah, you had Devil Driver, I had that in mind too, but uh, I gave honorable mention to Death Clock because uh, yeah. just really good. Um, the new Dream Theater I really liked, um, the new Death Angel I really liked, and I actually put Jason Newstead's metal album in there. Oh, good one. I would, for honorable mention, I put Otep, I would put Otep's Hydra on there. It, her last record, it's her first concept album. Um, it's not her best work. I do think Sevis Prey is her best album she's ever done, or The Ascension, but, uh, Hydra is such, it, it, it's, a, it's aggressive, it's angry, it's, <laughs> um, it's very similar to her House of Secrets record. It's uh, it's very good. Um, people need to check it out. I like, I like that band. That's, that's an excellent band. For rock, <laughs> for rock, I would throw uh, a new band out there. They're not new. They're on their first album. They're a relatively unknown on the national level, but they're a band out of, out of Tennessee called Roses Unread. A uh, female-fronted band by uh, fronted by Allison. Her husband John is the guitar player. Um, is uh, probably one of the best unknown unknown bands I've ever heard. Um, they are very good. Um, so people need to check them out. Um, they've uh, they've shared the stage. yeah they've shared the stage with a lot of big names. I mean they've been on stage with Saving Abel, Tantric, I Empire, Twelve Stones, Taproot, Pillar. Uh, they're playing with Straight Line Stitch next year, um, so uh, definitely keep your eye out for them because they're awesome. Cool. cool. Yeah, my other honorable mentions for rock stuff is uh, more obscure. It's a little uh, more obscure thing. There were a couple things, you know, that I thought the new Soundgarden and the new Alice in Chains both pretty solid albums. But from there, for me, it's uh, you know, it's uh, stuff from. Uh, overseas, you know, the new Airborne album I thought was really good. Really, really strong album. The new Adrian Gale I really enjoyed. I like you. I really like that Gemini Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Good band. And, you know, Heaven's Basement, they, they were so good live that I really got to give them props. That's actually a really strong album, Filthy Empire. Oh, nice. Um, I, I almost put Alice in Chains on there. It's a great album. I love it. It's, it's not as strong as the last one. It's though. not, and it's a lot slower as well. Um, it's a very slow album, I think. Musically slow. It, it's great, but um, there's a lot of slow songs on there. Um, you know, the new Bride, Incorruptible. Bride has been around for a very long time. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Incorruptible, their final studio album. Um, musically not as strong. Fans won't like it as much as Snakes on the Playground. Maybe Snakes is is uh, is their curse, probably. Uh, fans will always expect their music to be Snakes on the Playground. Every band evolves. Incorruptible is very good. Very Probably the most emotional record they've ever written. And uh, it's a great way for that band to go out. Um, John Schlitt from... Petra, he just released a Christmas album. I've never liked Christmas music. I have never loved it. I've always been one of those people that can't stand it. But it's it's a good Christmas album. It's very good. Um, oh, just so many good albums. I put Hollywood Undead, Notes from the Underground on my rock list, even though they're technically not rock. They have that rock element to them. It's uh, that's a that's a solid album. Not as good as American Tragedy, but still really, really good. Also had Tech Nine on there for his um, for his therapy EP. It's a rock metal rap hybrid album that's outstanding. Produced by Ross Robinson, obviously famous for Slipknot, Corn, all those. Um, you know, another great album. It's just. It's been such a good year for rock and metal as far as albums go, because everybody released albums this year. That uh, it's gonna yeah. be, you know, a lot of. It was really hard for me on the on the metal front to try to narrow it down. I mean, yeah. I there were a couple other things that I had in here that, uh, you know, the new Trivium, the new mm-hmm. Evil, the, the new Hunter Sub, the new Chimera. They were all. There are. It's impossible. You know what I mean? It, yeah, I mean, with a year with a year like it was to try to not narrow it down to ten was impossible for me. Mm-hmm. Even under twenty five was even tough. Good <laughs> year, and that's that's a that's a, that's, a, that's a, just another testament to what we said earlier of how rock is really having a, a really strong comeback. That right there it is, looking you in the face. Look at those albums and mm-hmm. try to deny how strong of a year we had. It is, and I, I think that the public popularity. I think you know, it's an ever evolving trend, you know, rock and metal was very popular in the 90s, and then pop and rap and hip-hop took over, now we're on the dance craze, rock and metal will have, will have our day, again, it'll happen, um, it's just all about who's gonna, who is strong enough and good enough and has the tenacity to stick around until that happens, you know, who isn't gonna die out, that's, you know, it's not like, never going away, my friend. Oh, ever since will. the blues, ever since the blues, there's been rock, and we're mm-hmm. we're not we're not going anywhere. In fact, you look at you look at a lot of, at a lot of these pop artists and hip hop artists, and they're using rock and metal elements in their music now. Um, and a lot of rock and metal artists are using electronic elements in their music now. Um, you know, it's interesting to see. I mean, Octave is another artist who's emerging that is outstanding. I hate dubstep. Always have. Octave is an artist. He, uh, his Infernal EP just released. And, uh, it's, it's different, but it's very good. It's dubstep meets metal, but there's enough metal in it to keep it good. And it's very, it's out, it's awesome. Um, people should check that out. Smile Empty Soul released Chemicals a few months ago. That one was really good as well. I mean, so many, like you said, Huntress. That's another one that, another band that, you know, his sophomore album was outstanding. So. Oh, geez, and I somehow overlooked the, uh, the you know, Jesse Leach being back in Kill Switch mm-hmm. in the album. Yeah. They, I'm bent. Wow, what yeah. a great album. Yeah. Um, Lamb of God is. Oh, let's like, not forget the, did we mention Hatebreed yet? The Divinity of Purpose? Yeah, I had that on my list. I, still not. I like you did. Not, not as good as their past stuff, but it's just more heavy and hardcore than their past stuff yeah. was. But still, is, you know, put it to the torch. Oh, my God. Um, you know, and live, that band has not lost a step yet. That band is still, still so good. Now, obviously, Striper released two records this year, Second Coming and No More Hell to Pay. Um, you know, Second Coming being the re Poor, poor, the poor Second Coming, yeah, Poor Second Coming being monsterly eclipsed by No More Hell to Pay. Oh, yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, and then just, Michael Sweet, really, next, year, really, really. next year, Michael Sweet will be releasing his solo record and book. Um, kind of taking the Nikki Six approach, releasing the book with the album to accompany it, which I've always liked that. 6 a.m. should be releasing something next year. That'll be exciting. Uh, 2014 is going to be, uh, 2014 is going to be a good year. Our schedule is already filling up. Um, obviously, you know, you'll be doing the In This Moment, uh, Butcher Babies tour out there, uh, with the yeah, of the day. 
I saw Devour the Day the other night with Sick Puppies, and they they put on a hell of a show. Uh, it'll be a good way to open up the uh, open up that show. So uh, that'll be fun. Yeah, that's actually at a new that's actually at a, a newer club down in Pittsburgh. It's been the place has been there for many a years, but it's been many different things, and it's finally a, a music facility again. So I'm hoping that they've done right with the the revamping of it and are able to put on a decent show there. That'll be the first time that I'm at this new place. So nice. not only getting to see in this moment, but at, at a new venue that uh, appears to be pretty small, so that should be pretty intense. Yeah, I mean, for us, we'll start off in January with uh, you and with uh, in this moment tour. I'll be hitting Stone Sour and Pop Evil here in Fort Wayne, which will be a great show. Um, we'll have the the road show, formerly Rock and Worship Road Show, Skillet headlining that. Um, Chimera is hitting uh, Pittsburgh. It's also hitting Kokomo here. Yes. Um, I will be uh, doing Striper and Queensryche in March in Iowa. So that is going to be uh, that'll be a great show. That show is going to be March 22nd in Iowa, Clear Lake, Iowa, at the Surf Ballroom, famous for Buddy Holly. Big Bopper and uh, Richie Valens, that whole plane crash. It's going to be in that city, that venue. And so uh, that's going to be a very good show. And obviously, March is going to start festival season for everybody. So Yeah, I'm looking forward. There's a couple of us. more personal things, but you know, lesser-known bands. Primal Fear finally hitting the United States mm-hmm. at the Alton Bar. Oh, my God. I, that's, I, I can't express how much I'm looking forward to that one. And uh, uh, I'm looking really looking forward also to uh, a couple other smaller ones that are that, that, that are coming that uh, I didn't see coming, and I'm looking forward to Dream Theater, for instance, on the corner right down by my house at a great little theater. Uh, that's going to be that's going to be off the hook. <laughs> and, let's, and let's not forget Red Drake and Cartel releasing their debut album next month. Oh my God, yeah, I'm so looking forward to that. It's, it's be- about time Jakey Lee finally doing something more rock or oriented yeah. i've got a few of his solo albums you know fine pink mist and a few of the other things and it's uh more jazz leaning and a little off the beaten path for what everybody expects from jay so it's nice to see him come back around and really tap into his rock roots again now if uh if richie blackmore would just do something rock related again it would be great uh, yeah uh nothing against blackmore's night but from a guy who grew up on Rainbow, Man on a Silver Mountain, and stuff like that. Kind of depressing. <laughs> and going back to albums that released, uh, Tom Kiefer from Cinderella, his uh, his solo debut, The Way Life Goes. That was really strong. Yeah, that was, that was different. really strong. Very different. Not what you'd expect from him. Uh, but with the no. vocal issues he's had and all of that stuff, it was... Uh, you know, it obviously took like 10 years for him to make, but uh, that was a great album. Um, you know, a great... Yeah, I don't think even if he had tried to do something under the Cinderella moniker that it could have been any better than what he offered up on his own. Mm-hmm. It was very good, and hopefully Cinderella will be touring again soon. I think they're they're talking about it, which would be very, very good to see. Um, yeah, it's always nice when the 80s guys go out. I'm kind of, I was kind of thought it was funny that I noticed that Autograph will be making this stop <laughs> here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, uh, that'll be a yeah. good show. <laughs> that should be interesting indeed. Yes. Well, I think that about does it for our Rock Rebellion podcast. Um, oh. If anybody has any input on anything we've said, if you disagree with anything we've said, you can comment and uh, we will read it. And uh, if you disagree, you're probably wrong, but we'll take that into consideration. <laughs> Um, yeah, please, we, we really, really want input. Uh, we'd like to make the show as interactive as possible, get you guys involved, your list count, your list help give us an idea of what we want to do, and you never know, if your list is strong enough, we may just have you on here with us to uh, state your case and back up your back up your list. Anybody who has any issues with anything we've said, if you uh, disagree or if you have input, let us know, and uh, maybe we'll bring you on to discuss Um Hit, hit us up in the comments. Uh, we will be back after the new year with a uh, 2014 kickoff show. Um, in the meantime, look for more interviews from the Front Row Report with Sick Puppies, Roses Unread, John Schlitz. Uh, in this moment, other artists, Corn, him. Um, check out our videos, check out our interviews, and keep checking back for the latest news. Go to thefrontrollreport.com for the latest reviews. Thanks for listening, guys, and have a great holiday.